chapter. Now Jesus said to the disciples, it is as if a man were going away on a journey, and he summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, and yet to another one, each according to his ability. And then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once, traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents, but the one who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. Master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I shall put you over many things. Enter the joy of your master. The one who had the two talents came forward, saying, Master, you handed to me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I shall put you over many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Now the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, weeping where you did not sow, gathering did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. So here now you have what is yours. The master replied to him, You wicked slave! You knew, did you, that I reap where I do not sow and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. Take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to all of those who have, more shall be given, and they shall have in abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have shall be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord.
down the bottom of the dresser. But I've never heard of people who buy cars and they never drive them. Stick them into a garage and they never drive them. I, I mean, who here has a purchased something that, that you, you liked it so much you wanted to keep it pristine? You, you buy clothes that you hardly ever wear because they're for special occasions, things that you have that you only take up once a year because they're too special. I mean, you go to toy fairs even, and you see people who have toys in boxes. What kind of toy has been kept in a box? I mean, your kids play with their toys, but I mean, there's this one that nobody ever took out of the box. It's so different than there's no books. But, and, and actually, it's better because I had an aunt once who covered all the furniture in the living room with clear plastic sleep bonds. I mean, you've seen stuff like this. I know you've seen stuff like this. You know, and nobody was allowed to go in there. And everything was covered in clear plastic because something might get dirty, right? You, you didn't use it, you didn't go in there, you covered it with clear plastic to keep it pristine and the way it was when it was brand new. Kind of weird when you look at it. I mean, it's kind of weird to go into a house. Jesus is telling this story. It's telling it to us. We took our lives and we hid them in the bottom drawer. We took our lives and we covered them with clear plastic in hopes that people can kind of see us but don't really touch us. We take everything about ourselves and we hide them. Why? Because we're afraid. Right? We're afraid we might lose what we have. We're afraid that somebody might interfere with us. We're afraid that somebody might get close to us. We're afraid. And so we do what we can to keep our stuff and our things and our very lives kind of ducked away in some place where we think we've made them safe. And in the process, never live. That's why he says that from those who have little, they lose it. Right? Because we hide it. Because we're afraid. We spend our lives being afraid. We're afraid. And, and here's the craziest thing of all. Is that most of the time we construct our religion into ways to justify and make certain that we continue to hide our lives away from anything else that might get close to us. What do we say? We all are assured that we've had a good life because we came to church. If you come to church, you'll have a good life. How do we know that none of you are really bad, really, really bad people? Because you come to church. Church people are just terribly boring. They don't do anything dangerous. Right? They, they, they keep their lives safe because that's what God would want them to do. 
carefully stored in the bottom drawer of your dress. And we're convinced that if we behave the right way and we do the right things, what, what does God do then? God will bless us. God will bless us. And there are some who even say if you do the right thing long enough, God will give you even, even more. God is this great celestial banker, don't you know? God passes on interest to everybody because God wants you to be rich. That man's giving that sermon right now on television. That's what we've done to our faith as ways to protect ourselves from the world around us. That if we come to church, we're kind of protected from the evil of the world around us. We kind of put on a plastic slip cover, if you may, by coming to church to keep us safe from the perils of the world around us. You know, I, I really realized and experienced this intimately for the first time a year ago. I've been to places like Cairo, and Cairo is just I've never been to Rio, but I've been to Cairo. It's unimaginable. A year ago, when, when I was in Ecuador, we went down to this town called Santo Domingo. And Santo Domingo is like Cairo, only a miniature. Not as big, it's not a miniature. We went down and visited with these people. These people who had nothing. When I say they had nothing, I mean they had nothing. There were these people, they literally had to steal the water they drank. That's for any of us, that's unimaginable. I had to steal the very water we drink. And we're, we're there in this little community with shacks, little huts, us. And there is this old concrete slab that's dirty and cracked and held, holding up by a few posts is like this tin, this, this corrugated tin roof. And when you kind of see the little rain shack of sun on it, it's, it's blue. This is where this group of people worship. And they'd asked me to say something. And what do you say to people who have to steal water to survive? Right? Do, you, do you see what we've done to what faith is about for us? That, that here are people <coughs> who have to steal water to survive, and we somehow use our faith to keep us away from this sort of experience. And these people are telling me, God is all they have. You see the difference? Where we think of faith as something to keep our lives away from the ugliness of the world. And here are people who are in the very depths of what that is about. And we say to you, God is all we have. That's a world of difference from where most of us find ourselves. Where God is a part of what we have. Or something that we have to kind of keep our other things safe. You know, how often have we found ourselves in our lives, our relationships, people at work, even people in our house, we don't tell the truth to because we're afraid of what they'll think of us. We don't, we're afraid of what people will find in our lives. We're afraid of what people might think that our lives might be about. We are like that third servant who bury everything about ourselves into a little corner. Sometimes we hope nobody opens the door. See, the story isn't about money. It's always about us. And everything that's buried inside of us and all of the things that we're holding back and all of the things that we want to keep away from somebody else and all of the things we kind of want to keep keep safe and over here and, and pristine. And there are people who live in this world sing here in just a moment. It talks about that. But what does that look like, a life that's opened up? What does it look like, a life that's taken out of the bottom of the rest of the world? What does a life look like that has the plastic slip covers taken off? A life that begins to see the world around it? A life that begins to feel the world around it? How does that look? What does it feel like? What does it experience? It experiences itself itself out for the world around it. It experiences itself as not being afraid of the things that are pressing in on top of us. It experiences its God as something that makes us bolder and bigger, larger than we could have hoped to have been on our own. 
this base of a life that somehow says, I don't have to preserve my life. I don't have to be afraid of the world around me. I open myself to the world that God has created. God, open us into something more. Show us something bigger. Allow us to be these great, great people. Yeah.